Hey, good morning, everybody. Hope that you're having a great morning so far. Um, I mean, you think it would get easier, like looking into a camera and talking to everybody after doing it like nine times. But I'll tell you what, it just, it's weird because you can take as many times as you need to to make it sound like perfect in your head. But the problem is, I don't know if you've ever listened to yourself over video, but you, you hate hearing yourself over video. So you just keep doing take after take and like, maybe I can sound different or do, it doesn't work. So what I'm doing now is I'm just going for it. My soul can't take doing another 30 takes for a Sunday morning. So what you see is what you get. And it's not going to be me doing a whole bunch of takes. And maybe that'll add a little bit of authenticity of knowing that like, hey, we might not be doing it live, but... It's not like I'm going to go back and change anything for this Sunday or going forward for that matter. But again, like what I said earlier, I hope that your morning has been going great. I hope that you have said, hey, in the chat, if you're watching on your TV, pull it up on your phone and say, hey, uh, we're watching from here and watching from there. That helps us to at least connect with you a little bit because I'm talking in the chat and looking at all you guys and communicating with you. And I know that you know, Mark is doing the same thing and a whole bunch of other people on staff. So we want to connect with you. We want to know where you are, what you're doing, um, and meet with you a little bit this morning um, as we go um, through our little church service that we have on YouTube right now. Well, so starting out, we're going to just do worship like we always have. But again, be sure to connect with everybody a little bit before we get going. And even while we're worshiping, feel free um, to connect um, in the chat and do that thing. Love you guys. Again, I miss you, but I'm glad that we can still meet in our own weird way online. There were walls. There were walls between us By the cross you came and broke them down Broke them down There are chains around us By your grace we are no longer bound No longer bound You called me out of the grave You called me into the light You called my name and then my heart came alive your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. darkness shaking all the dead are coming back to life back to life hear the song awaken all creation singing we're alive cause you're alive you call me out of the grave you call me into the light you call my name and then my heart came alive your love is greater Shout it out with love, cause you love and what a love we found. Death can hold us down. Shout it out with love, cause you love and what a love we found. Death can hold us down. Shout it out with love, cause you love and what a love we found. Death can hold us down. Shout it out with Your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater, your love is stronger, your love awakens
awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater, your love is stronger. Your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Lifted my shame, drawn me with loving kindness, washed whiter than snow. You have redeemed and made me whole. In Jesus, you have won me, you have broken every chain with love. In mercy, you have triumphed over death, and you are worthy of glory and praise. Love, you've shown me love by leaving your throne, by bleeding and dying. That wonderful cross that took all my guilt and sin away. In Jesus, you have won me. You have broken every chain with love and mercy. You have triumphed over death and you are worthy. God, you're worthy of all the, the glory and praise that we could ever give you. Lord God, as we sing in our homes this morning, Lord God, we are not just idly sitting by and Lord, not expecting you to move or to work or to reveal things in our lives. Lord, we expectantly wait for you to continue to reveal yourself to us, Lord God, in the maybe in the normalcy of what we're doing maybe in the, the quiet time that we have with you. But Lord, we just know that this time that we're in is not meant to be for nothing, Lord God. We want to hear from you, Lord God. We want to hear your direction in our lives, Lord. We want to grow closer to you in this time. Lord God, we don't want to just be idly standing by. 
Lord, help us to grow closer in you. And Lord God, you're worthy of all the praise. And God, we pray all this in your name. Amen. Hey, good morning, family. Man, it is so good to see you. Uh, I don't know about you, but it, it feels like it's been a long, long time since we have uh, been together, like physically just hanging out and being in church together. I really miss being with you, and uh, I hope that you miss uh, being with everybody else as well. I'm sure that kind of in the scope of all of time, we will be together again soon. Uh, but until that time, I'm, I'm glad that we have this opportunity to get together virtually um, and, uh, and just connect. And so hopefully you've already said, you know, said hi and chatted with some, maybe some people as you started off your morning. And uh, ladies, if you did the, the women's event on Friday night, I hope that it was a good time for you. And, and I hope that at least in, in some small way you felt a little bit more connected with some of the other ladies after doing that. And, you know, we have to kind of make uh, use uh, the 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 technology that we have during this time and uh, just the opportunity to connect in different ways using your know, phones and, and, and letters and, and emails and things like that. But I hope that um, you're making the most of that and, and that you're feeling hopeful as you come into this Sunday. And one of the things that we want to do as part of our worship and one of the things that maybe you've missed doing is participating and partaking in communion. You know, communion is one of those um, gifts that Jesus gave us to uh, to remember him, and also it's it's an act of of as the family coming together and, and remembering him together. And so today we're going to do that. I know that we're not together physically, but we're one in spirit. And, and although we're separated by distance, we have an opportunity to do something together at the same time right now uh, to um, remember uh, our, our Lord and Savior. You know, the whole reason that we can even be the body of Christ is because of what Christ has done for us. And uh, this, this time of communion is an opportunity for us to remember that. So hopefully you are already prepared for this and you have uh, some, some bread or a cracker uh, and, and, so, and some juice in a cup uh, to partake in communion. If you, if you got that, would you just gather that around right now? Uh, maybe it's just you or maybe you're with your family. Uh, gather that around because I want to read a passage for you. And then I want us to partake in this together and uh, just remember Jesus. He's the reason that we're family in the first place because of what he has done for us on the cross. So let me read for you what uh, Paul wrote in Corinthians as he's giving some instructions to the church as to what to do during this time of communion. And uh, this is what Paul writes for us in 1 Corinthians chapter 11. He writes this in verse 23. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death, until he comes. You proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. That's what we're doing together. We are proclaiming that Jesus died for us. And we do that over and over and over again, this, uh, this physical, this symbolic way with bread and juice to uh, remind us that he, he gave his life for us. And we celebrate that until he comes. And so we're looking back at what Jesus did and we're also looking forward to his return. In these days, I think even more so, we're looking forward to that. So I want to encourage you right now, uh, if you have your bread, to just take that out. I, I have some, some bread right here, and I want to encourage you to take that or your cracker, and I just want to pray for us right now, and, uh, and, and just remember Jesus' body that was given for us. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I want to thank you so much for the fact that you have made us one body. And uh, we're one body whether we're physically together or not. We uh, we are your brothers. We are brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, Father. You are uh, our our head, our leader, Jesus. The, the word says that you're the head of the church, and we celebrate that today. And we recognize Jesus that the reason that we're the church is because of what you've done for us. And specifically, Jesus, as we, as we hold this bread in our hands, we remember that you gave yourself, you gave your body for us on the cross. Oh, Jesus, still our hearts and quiet us as we remember that. Thank you, thank you so much that your body was given 
for us, your life for ours. We remember that, we celebrate that, we thank you for that right now. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Hey, let's, let's eat together. Take your cup if you would, and uh, if you're with family, just pass that around, make sure everybody has some. And Jesus said uh, that at the end of that meal together, uh, he took the cup. And he gave that cup new meaning uh, as they celebrated together. And he said, this is the new covenant in my blood. In other words, um, because of the shedding of my blood, uh, you're going to have forgiveness of sins once and for all. Up until that time, there had been uh, ongoing sacrifices to cover sins, sort of temporarily. And Jesus was making a new covenant that said, this is no longer temporary. This is forever. That through the shedding of my blood, you can be forgiven. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I thank you so much for your blood. I thank you for the fact that you suffered and you died and you paid the ultimate price on the cross as uh, you shed your blood physically, the perfect Lamb of God, so that you might cover our sins once and for all. One final sacrifice to cover the sins, all of our sins. And Lord Jesus, we remember that. We thank you for that. And we thank you that through your blood we're healed and that we're unified as your body. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Let's drink together. I know that that wasn't the same as normal communion together, but there is something about doing that all together, at least at the same time. As in unity, we remember Jesus' body and his blood. So I pray that uh, that's a great uh, part of worship and celebration for you this morning. Now let's continue our worship before we hear God's word. Who could know your thoughts? Who could grasp your ways? Who could match your goodness or deny your grace? You awake my soul, captivate my heart, oh God, how great you are. You command the laws of the universe, burning bright with glory, infinite in worth, with the sea. Stand in all of you, and I stand in all of you. Christ, the way, life, the truth, I stand in all of you. What King would leave his throne? Set his crown aside for his own creation, did the sin and die. Unrelenting love, never ending grace, oh God, we praise your name. And I stand it all. Stand in all you. Christ, the way, the light, and the truth. I stand in all you. Yeah. Oh, men, oh, men, oh, men. Oh, men, oh, men, oh, men. We
Hey guys, good morning. It's good to be able to share with you uh, and to be with you even though we're apart. Uh, I'm really glad to be able to share uh, from the Word with you guys this morning. Um, Thank you, Alan, for leading us. And uh, today uh, we're going to be talking a little bit about um, uh, just kind of continuing in this this season of COVID and kind of how to engage. Uh, during the season of COVID-19. And today what I want to talk to you guys about is about staying on mission during COVID-19. And uh, usually what I've done in the past is I uh, give you a little bit of an update on what we're doing at Church for the Nations um, and then got into my message. Today I'm going to kind of flip that around uh, for you guys and um, we'll do a little bit of an update on the back end. Um, but yeah, I mean... COVID-19, right? Like came out of nowhere. None of us were expecting it. Um, and, you know, it's, it's, it's come with a lot of challenges, but I think it's also come with a lot of opportunities. I think before this entire COVID-19 deal, um, I hardly knew my neighbors. Uh, but during it, especially at the beginning of it, when this was all new and nobody knew how long this thing would last and we're still in it. We kind of still don't know. There's still a lot of unknowns, but just kind of our, our, our neighborhood just kind of started to band together. And we, uh, Melissa and I, and, and some of our other neighbors, we, we just kind of started to instigate this, excuse me, this neighborhood um, kind of camaraderie. And we felt like we needed to, to do stuff. Um, and, and I would start texting my neighbors and texting, uh, you know, hey, I'm going to the store. Do you need something? Or And they, they would text me. And um, we've kind of grown as a neighborhood and as a neighbor and as neighbors in the last um, couple of months. And I mean, all because of that wouldn't have happened before I moved here. Um, I was hanging out with a bunch of different pastors. And uh, one of the things that the pastors would say is like one of the challenges in their ministry was that uh, once the garage door went up, in uh, uh, the communities that we live in, um, that the people that went inside, you never saw them again uh, to that a garage door when back up in the morning, or sometimes you wouldn't see them for days on end, um, and that there really wasn't a way for us uh, to connect, and that that was a big challenge. Um, and that, that I would face that in planting Church for the Nations. And so... Um, Although this time has been challenging, in fact, you know, in our family, we've lost a family member due to COVID-19 and we've had tons of family members, over 10 people um, that had had this thing, mostly in Ecuador, um, where uh, me and my family are from. Um, You know, there's also been a lot of opportunity. And so we've been trying to figure out what does it look like to be faithful to the mission that Jesus has called us to in the middle of all this. And... um, hop on those opportunities as Jesus gives them to us. Um, Mother Teresa once said, um, we can do no great things, only small things with great love. And so that's the heart behind, um, you know, trying to be faithful to our following of Jesus in the middle of all this. You know, we're not going to change the entire neighborhood, I don't think. But one text here and there, you know, one uh, gesture here and there, a, a, a wave that turns into a walk, that turns into a hello, um, and, and, and hopefully turns into more. And so in the, in the next uh, few minutes, uh, we're going to explore um, uh, one of the most famous texts in uh, the New Testament um, and something that all believers um, should be holding on to. Um, and um, we're going to see what Jesus has to say about how we're supposed to be living out our faith. So if you have um, a device next to you or uh, if you're on your device, maybe you could borrow someone's device. Uh, We're going to turn to Matthew 22 verses 34 through 40. And I'm going to read those for us. And and what's happening in this 
um, uh, environment is that Jesus is constantly being tested. His theology is being tested. His character is being questioned. And Jesus has done all these cool things, but people are still, for whatever reason, unimpressed by the stuff that he's doing, by the things that he's saying. Uh, and uh, at some point, um, they like kind of berate him, like questioning him back to back, back to back, back to back, back to back. And and that event happens in Matthew 12, uh, 22. Um, and there's a mirroring passage that happens in Mark chapter 12. Um, and so here towards the end of one of those kind of like questioning sessions, um, uh, they ask yet another question, starting at verse 34. Hearing that Jesus had silenced the Sadducees, the, Fa- the Pharisees got together. So the Sadducees had first attested him. So they were the political elite, uh, these priestly folks, uh, knowers and um, explainers of the law. Uh, and then the Pharisees got together. Other folks that knew the law, that uh, were really married to the idea of Moses, this law and, and the canon of Moses. And, um, uh, and they were always trying to trap Jesus in, in one way or another. And so one of the Pharisees says, To them, an expert in the law, they tested him with this question saying, teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? And talking about the law of Moses. And Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. All the law and the prophets hang on these two commandments. So here's Jesus. He's out there doing his Jesus thing. He's being a rabbi. He's teaching. He's sharing uh, the love of God. He's explaining the word to the Pharisees, to the Sadducees, to the scribes. They're trying to corner him. They can't get him in the corner. He's asking, he's answering questions with questions. And he's doing his whole rabbi thing. And they ask him this question that was actually... Uh, um, a question that was, um, uh, you know, really um, asked by many of these people, um, almost like as an exercise, but also as, um, you know, something that they really wanted to get to the bottom of. Um, and so often they would kind of kind of kick this question around out of the 613 laws, right? Um, which one of them is uh, the... Um, most important. And Jesus answers, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. And this is something that comes from the Shema. Um, and the Shema is, uh, the, the, the word Shema in Hebrew means to hear. And uh, it is something, uh, even till this day, uh, the Shema breaks open uh, the worship in the uh, Jewish synagogue, closes worship in the Jewish synagogue. And it's, hear, O Israel, uh, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And so Jesus is, no, no, no one would have um, uh, argued with Jesus that that was the greatest of the commandments. That uh, the Shema uh, is the bedrock or the foundation of the Jewish faith, of Jewish monotheism. And so they wouldn't have questioned that at all. But no one um, had ever paired that with the second one. The, the, the second is like it. He says, love your neighbor as yourself. And um, David had uh, uh, synthesized the law um, in one of the Psalms to about 19, uh, 15 or so uh, um, statements. Isaiah had tried it with six, Habakkuk with like three. Um, <clears throat> Isaiah, I think it was Isaiah came back and did it with two. Micah um, had um, another statement. Uh, and so Jesus um, says, Here's the number one thing you should think about when thinking about the law and, and, and living righteously. But the second one is just like it. Jesus here is saying that proper theology and thinking should be paired with proper practice or doing. Both are equally essential to proper worship, that you can't divorce the one from the other. That what... True worship is when we think correctly about God, but also do correctly the things that God um, tells us to do. When we think of um, our faith, we uh, we think about so- someone once said that our faith 
has this cruciform shape. It's up and down, right, between us and God, but it's also side to side between us and others and our neighbors. Our journey of learning to love God well, in other words, should lead us to the practice of learning to love others well too. Our journey of learning to love God well should lead us to the practice of learning to love others well too. And and I love what Jesus does here. He says, ourselves included, to love your neighbors as yourself. And that's important. According to Jesus, being a good neighbor is one of the top two biblical slash discipleship principles. So when we think about what it is to be a good son or daughter of God, what it is to be a good believer, it's not just believing the right thing, but it's doing the right thing too. A couple years ago, I read a book by um, two dudes, Dustin Willits and and Brandon Clements. Um, And it was all about um, using hospitality as a weapon for the gospel, right? Engaging our neighbors and engaging those around us um, with the use of our homes. Of course, we can't do that right now because of the COVID-19 season that we're in. But hopefully there's going to be a day where we can do that. And what I do believe is that the seeds that we are sowing right now um, will germinate around our table um, one day in the near future. Willits and, and Clements wrote, too many of us mistakenly think that in order for something to be significant, it has to be big, different, drastic, and extraordinary. Somebody once asked me, Luis, you're planting this church. What's your guys' strategy? Prayer <laughs> and being a good neighbor. That's our strategy, right? <laughs> we rely on Jesus. And our hope is that the way that we practice our faith is winsome and that people would want to join what we're doing because it's authentic, because it's real, and because it's engaging to what people, uh, to the issues that people are facing every single day. In that same um, book, um, uh, the guys quote um, this other brother, Sky Jathani, and and they say, and, and Sky says, we've fallen into the conventional thinking that big mission demands big tactics. But we forget that in the economy of God's kingdom, big does not beget big. It's precisely the opposite. The overwhelming message of Jesus' life and teaching is that small begets big. Consider God's plan to redeem creation, big, is achieved through his incarnation as an impoverished baby, small. Jesus feeds thousands on a hillside, big, with just a few fish and loaves. Small. Christ seeks to make disciples of all nations, right? Hence, Church for the Nations. And he starts with a handful of fishermen. Small. More time at home, right? So, so bringing it home means more time to play, which we've been doing, right? More time to read, maybe if you're a reader. Or more time to watch, you know, TikTok videos or (laughs) Facebook videos or Netflix. But also, it means that you have more time in your neighborhood. More time to engage in God's mission by being a good neighbor. So I want to leave you with a couple. Maybe these things are elemental. Maybe these things are kind of things you've already thought of. And, or maybe these are things that um, you and your family are already practicing. But I just want to, you know, say these things and share these things. Just something to consider and something to think about as uh, we go on mission or remain on mission or engage the mission of Jesus during this COVID-19 um, uh, crisis. So just a few ways to be a good neighbor and to stay on mission. Go on a walk with a neighbor and just listen. Just listen. And what's that? That's practicing the ministry of presence. You're just being there. Or order delivery for a neighbor from a favorite local spot. That's both stimulating the local economy and feeding your neighbor. Maybe even surprise them. 
How about this one? Offer to pick up groceries for a neighbor while you're out. Specifically those that are maybe, um, you know, uh, uh, older or, uh, you know, have, um, you know, fear of being out and about or for whatever reason are uh, more susceptible to the virus than, than the rest of us, you know. And, and, and as I say this, do all of this while practicing um, social distancing and and actually i hate that term i hate the it's a misnomer i think because i think more than ever we need to be socially connected um and um uh, not distant you know i think that brings out to the um uh, the fact that uh, we are called to community uh and not uh, isolation and i think that's one of the principles that has been brought out by this so physical distancing even as we're practicing physical distancing how about this one mow your neighbor's lawn that one's easy. Ask a neighbor if you could pray for them and do it on the spot and then follow up with them, right? If, if the opportunity arises. Practice Sabbath and self-care. Now, even in the middle of all this, like, what does Sabbath look like, right? What is pausing and delighting in God and worshiping God and taking one day in seven, seven look like? And that's something that you have to wrestle with and kind of come up with on your own. And, and for me, I think one of the things has been like putting my phone down and unplugging from the rest of the world, especially because so much is happening on the Internet and right at my fingertips and I can so easily become overwhelmed. I just need to take a day where I'm not um, on the phone. <laughs> and I'm not saying that it's easy because it hasn't been. Um, but that is my hope and that's my aim when I practice that. And the reality is that self-care is not selfish because you want to be able to give to people. You want to be able to be on mission in the middle of all this time. And if you don't, if you're in a place where you're dry, there's nothing for you to give. And so these times of Sabbath, these times of rest, these times of recreation, right? And engaging in the rhythms that God has established for us um, are important in order for us to engage mission. And lastly, think of the people under your own roof as your neighbors too. How can you love your children? How can you love uh, your spouse? How can you love your, you know, the grandparent that is under your own roof and and be intentional about being a good neighbor. The question about who is our neighbor has always been before us ever, ever since Genesis, right? And the neighbor is just those that are around us, right? And Jesus has made it more and more clear right here in this passage, you know, that when we love God and we love our neighbors, we're living faithfully to what he's called us to do. So when all this is over, I think what we do now is um, either going to bear fruit or it's not, right? And I think we have an opportunity to sow seeds during this time of COVID-19, missional seeds, right? Where hopefully one day when we're able to gather, we can use our homes again as a weapon for the gospel and have people uh, around our tables uh, like they did in the book of Acts in Acts chapter 2 and where people gathered and broke bread together. So that's my hope, uh, and that's my encouragement to you, uh, that you would be engaging in God's mission in big ways and small uh, during this time. And um, yeah, so about the update for Church for the Nations, you know, right now we have spent the last couple of weeks doing most of our ministry online. We've been doing some training. We've been talking about our discipleship continuum, and we're coming to the close of that particular part. We're about to go into a 10-day fast, uh, 10 days leading to Pentecost between May 21st and May 31st, that God would open doors and that we would be able to live out the same message Um in our own lives, and that when we are engaging our neighbors, that they are responsive to the gospel, they are responsive to us, and that God is putting people in our midst that we can engage. And so, um, how can you pray? Pray that God does great things through the people that have been called to Church for the Nations. Uh, We've assembled, uh, and people have been, uh, uh, about 13 or so of us have been called to to this core team so far. Uh, We have a total of almost 19 people that have been uh, connected to us from right here from Smoky Point Community Church mostly. Um, And we're still looking for others who will come alongside us. And if you've been kind of feeling the urge and feeling the pull, um, feel free to give me, uh, you know, shoot me a message. 
Luis at churchforthenations.com um, and just have a conversation with me. Find our Facebook page and go from there. God bless you guys. It's been amazing. Um, peace. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. We live for you. Jesus, a name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say. Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. We live for you. And only there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes and wonder. Show me who you are and your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Oh, oh. Every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. Oh, we live for you. And holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are. And
God, we thank you for this time. Lord, to lift up your praise, Lord, to gather together as a church. Lord God, to Lord God, to be able to hear the words Luis had to say. Lord, I pray that those words, Lord God, that they sink into our hearts, Lord, that we take those with us. Lord, that they don't sit at a surface level, but Lord, they there's something that we grab hold of, something that we take into our weeks as we go throughout it and we inevitably get distracted with things. Lord, I, I pray that we remember the truth of these worship songs. Lord God, that we remember that you are worthy of everything that we could ever give you. Lord God, and that we continue to worship you day in and day out and worship with song, but also worship and how we're living in our bodies as a living sacrifice in that. So Lord God, I just pray that you continue to encourage us as we go throughout this week. Lord God, that we continue to look to you. Lord God, and we find comfort in you. Lord God, we love you. We pray this in your name. Amen. Well, as always, it was great worshiping, great singing with you all. It's great having you here um, as a continuation of our worship. Uh, we have uh, tithe that is either online by mail or by text, I believe. I've said it a couple times and I forget it every time, but here's where you can give or here is where you can give. Um, but until next week, hope you have a great rest of your Sunday. Um, and I hope it isn't rainy for the whole rest of the week. And I hope that you're able to get out. We're able to get some sun like we were a couple of days ago. I'm going to quit talking now about the weather, but I love you guys. Have a great Sunday.